Now, Xavier Desmond, Xavier says, who is the worst baby face in wrestling history? Is it Cody? Wow. Um, I mean, that really tells you how bad Cody's doing right now. Who, who would you say, Finn, is the worst baby face in wrestling history? Or am I going to... Is it who I expect you're going to say? Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, obviously, <laughs> people are going to expect me to say John Cena. And he was booed, but he was actually very successful as a baby face in terms of selling merchandise... And he was somebody who could provoke a reaction. Usually it wasn't the reaction that he was seeking, but he provoked a reaction regardless. <laughs> Mostly people were booing him when they should have been cheering him. Um, but I mean, I think as a baby face in terms of his responses, yeah, it was not ideal, but he was very successful in the role and that cannot be denied. And that was one of the reasons why Vince wouldn't turn him because he was selling so much merchandise and he was this big kid's hero. Obviously, Cody isn't <laughs> either of those things. <laughs> uh, and right now, he's certainly the worst baby face in wrestling. And after the weightlifting belt incident on last week's Dynamite in the eight man match, Kenny, they just need to turn him. That needs to start tonight on Dynamite. Yeah. There should be no further delay. But I mean, as far as worst baby faces ever, some people would say it's Diesel Kevin Nash because he didn't draw as champion in 95. But I mean, who would have drawn as champion in 95? And if Bret Hart was such a, you know, vibrant ticket selling pay-per-view order, you know, stimulating babyface, he would never have lost the title. So it's that simple. I mean, Warrior was seen as a big flop as babyface when he became a champion in 1990. But as a fan, would you have really known that? Maybe if you'd gone to a house show, and seen like this, you know, partially naked building, you might have put two and two together. I mean, Warrior always seemed really over, didn't it? When it is, you saw yeah. him on TV. You know, I remember Colin Bowman, uh, you know, my former partner on Power Slam. Uh, I remember him telling me that he saw Warrior at a house show on a UK tour. I guess it would have been 91 before he left. And I remember him telling me, and Colin was at, uh, Wembley Stadium for SummerSlam 92 so he you know he was there for for Davy Boy Smith versus Bret Hart and he witnessed that but I remember him telling me that Warrior on the house show that he saw him out in the UK was the most over baby face he ever saw in his life there you go yeah I but, mean, he, but, uh, but as a ticket seller he did not do well which was the reason why he lost the belt to Slaughter yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and think of it in a different way. Worst baby faces ever. I mean, look, Bob Backlund in 1993 was a pretty terrible baby face because yeah. he was just like an old man shouting at a cloud, but he wasn't an old man. He was like 42. Um, yeah. Who else is a bad baby face? Uh, uh, Kenny, just on Bob Backlund, uh, the last year of his title reign, if you uh, read up on it, a lot of people, even though he was still doing decent business, there was a lot of resentment towards Backland in his mm -hmm. final year of his WWF title reign in uh, 1983. I mean, people really wanted to see the back of Backland as champion. Uh, a lot of people were saying, well, it should be Jimmy Snooker as champion. Obviously, that didn't happen for reasons we don't <laughs> need to go into here. But I mean, Snooker was more popular than Backland was. And yeah. Backlund, the fans really turned on him towards the end of his reign. Yeah. Um, obviously lost the belt in the end to uh, Iron Sheik in December 83. But he was at the end, uh, as far as WWF fans were concerned, they were just infuriated by Backlund. They just wanted him to go away. They couldn't stand him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think in, uh, he did do well in 1996, but I think to adult male fans, Shawn Michaels was probably a bad baby face in 1996 yeah. because men didn't really want you to be doing a strip tease uh, and, no. and all that kind of stuff. So he just didn't... It was Timing for him was quite bad because it's, and it all culminated obviously at Madison Square Garden at Survivor Series when he came out and, you know, the crowd even cheered when Jose Lothario got hit with a camera and had a heart attack. Yeah. It tells you how you know, bad it was going for Sean. So, yeah. you know... Yeah. Um, that, that, was one of those, that was one of those nights, wasn't it, where you, where you just saw that there was a big difference in the audience in New York City. Yeah. Because he was over uh, for the rematch in San Antonio. I know that was his hometown, but he was definitely over as a face there. I will so, actually say, yeah, in, in the comments here, the Xavier Desmond has a great shout here. Miz was a, terrible, a pretty terrible baby face. Miz's, you know, baby face run where Ric Flair was his manager. Um, I always remember a great line about when Miz 
beat Wade Barrett in the pre-show of WrestleMania 29. And I think somebody said um, that there was rain in the stadium and they think it was God crying that Miz had won the Intercontinental title again as a baby face. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I always felt Lex Luger was a real flop as a face. Night three, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he you know slammed Yokozuna on was it the USS Intrepid? Trepid? Yes, uh, Trepid. July fourth, a body slam challenge, and it just felt so forced. And he was just like, well, you know, are people really going to warm to this guy? And then he went on the Lex Express bus tour, had the SummerSlam night three match, and then didn't beat Yokozuna for the title as a count out finish, and people were really disappointed by that. I think Luger never really clicked as a babyface on top in WWF. Um, I mean, he always, I think he struggled really as a babyface in WCW as well. Um, he'd done well in Crockett in 88. That flair Luger feud in 88 was, was did big business by the standards of the time. I know Crockett went out of business in late 88, Turner took over, but I don't really think you could point the finger of blame uh, Lex Luger for all the financial problems that that company had. So he did well as a face in 88, but in later years, I think he really struggled as a baby face, Lex Luger did. And that was because, you know, it was kind of like what happened with Big Show, Paul White later in his career. Luger just turned too many times yeah. and people just didn't know where they were, whether they were coming or going with him.